What practical advice can you give regarding podcasting? Thank you. Um, let me tell you my rules. So when I started the podcast, originally they were heavily scripted and I got feedback from learners and ended up going for a much more natural, much more unscripted approach. Um, through kind of exploring and experimenting, I ended up with a number of rules, which, if you like, inform my, not my pedagogy, but my po podagogy. And um, I kind of really wish I'd invented that term, and in fact, sadly, haven't. Um, first of all, as absolute rule, is that podcasts will be between about four and, and seven minutes. I won't do something longer than that. You know, the idea is they're meant to be short, they're meant to be sharp, they're meant to have impact. And I think we have to think about the learner consuming them. You know, they're going to be maybe on the bus or maybe at home or maybe in a classroom or maybe they're going to be on a laptop or maybe these things are going to be stored on an iPod or another kind of portable media device. So it's all about kind of swift, quick impact. The other thing I would do is I'd always start and end the podcast with a recognised um, signal. So I might say, you know, this sociology podcast is about... And then I'd say what it was about, blah, blah, blah. And I'd always start the podcast in the same way. Because over time, learners did become kind of familiar with that as a pattern and a structure. Then what I would do is I would end by recapping. And in a sense, this is no different, is it? I guess than teaching, you know, you start with your aim. You have a kind of plenary and a recap at the end. I would end with a recap of what the podcast was on, using the same words. So I'd start by saying, this sociology podcast is on, blah, blah. And I'd end by saying, and so this sociology podcast has looked at... Now, all the way through, I'd choose four or five words, and I'd like count and number and repeat them. So, basically, the recording would sound like this. This sociology podcast is on... Blah, blah. Firstly, we will look at... Blah. Secondly, we will look at... Blah, blah. And finally, thirdly, we will look at... Blah, blah. And then there'd be me doing the talking, and as you can see from this video, the kind of wild gesticulation that's not obviously picked up because these would be audio. But every now and then I'd stop and I'd count. So I'd say, so firstly we've done this, and now secondly we're going to do this. So all the way there'd be those kind of signals and those markers to kind of make sure that the audience and the consumer is kind of fully involved with the audio as much as possible. What I would do is not script them, I'd have a little post-it note or a scrap of bit of paper. I'd write out the three or four or five keywords that summarised for me the messages I want to get across. I would then number them in order <clears throat> and I'd go for it. And the reason for this is simple. I think the time it takes to write a script for five minutes is so long that if I just did them off the cuff and got them wrong and deleted them and started again, I still think it would be quicker and easier to do them on the spur of the moment. But you have to kind of get over it and get over the kind of the, almost the, the, the sort of sudden frozen feeling of having a, a kind of microphone in front of you. And once you just do a few and make some mistakes and get them wrong and try again and get better at it, you really, really quick, quickly kind of get over that, that, that kind of feeling of, of almost being paralysed. And in the end, you can do them in one take, you can do them in, in really, really quickly. So again, it's about the impact for the learner, not the time that it takes the teacher. That's the more important kind of rational calculation here. So they are my rules of podagogy.